There we go. All right, so good morning, everybody. Uh, today is Friday, September 22nd, and this is uh, Computer Science 1010. And uh, we are currently working through our MATLAB code. So if we take a look at the Moodle page, just show where we are. All right, here we go. Um, somebody give me a thumbs up if, I, if you see our Moodle page on the screen. There, thank you, Derek. Okay, so basically, uh, we our time is marching on, and we're at the end of week five today. So, uh, on Wednesday, I asked you to submit a draft of the MATLAB code. Now, I was not um, expecting it to work. I've had of the class, I've had eight submissions. Um, I hope the rest of you, if you've not submitted, will will submit, um, and if if you attempt to submit the code, um, I've had some people submit it to me as a document, a word perfect or a word document, which is fine because then I can copy it and put it into my own MATLAB environment and analyze your code with you. Uh, or if you submit it as a .m file, a MATLAB file, that's fine as well. Uh, but uh, my, my, my message to you today is to encourage you to, uh, to submit your your MATLAB code. Next, um, what I'd like to know is, do you guys have any questions about MATLAB code at this point or anything I can help you with? Hello, Hume, it's good to see you today. I was just asking, I don't know if you got on before I asked, but I was saying um, I've had eight out of 15 submissions for MATLAB code for the draft. I don't expect it to work at this point. If it works, that is fantastic. Good morning, Hume. Uh, but so I will, um, I will help you debug the code to a certain extent. Uh, but if you have any questions, please let me know. Okay, good. Thank you, Hume. That's good to know. So, does anyone have any questions about the code? There are a couple of things I wanted to uh, to bring up, but I wanted to make sure I was answering questions. Yes. So can we get feedback? Yes. Absolutely. And have you, have you, I didn't even notice you've submitted. Yes. yes. Okay. So this weekend I will go through your code and I will um, address some, whatever issues I can, I can help you with. So there were two things specifically that I wanted to talk about. Um, one of them is the order of the code itself. So I'm going to pull up some stuff on the screen over here. Uh, just a second. I have to share, but I have to pull it up on my screen over here. All right. So um, I'm going to, here we go. I'm going to share the screen with you. All right. So this is a piece of code uh, that works to do the temperature conversions, except it does not do the condition of what happens if uh, the temperature falls below absolute zero. Excuse me. No. Okay. So, um, can you let's see? Give me a thumbs up if you can see my MATLAB, my MATLAB code screen. I can't see it. You cannot. Yeah, it says my sharing, my screen sharing is paused. That's weird. All right, hang on just a second. Let's try again. Um. Why do you suppose? Why in the world? Well, all right. So what I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna try something else. This is so I um. Resume share. Still nothing. Why are you not sharing on me? Let me see. All right. I'm gonna try again. Um, my computer went. My virtual drive went completely down yesterday. And they had to rebuild my um, my virtual drive, so that was really exciting. Um, but what I'm going to do here, I'm going to show you a couple of things. All right, so this is I'm going to see if I can copy this. Okay, Control C. I'm going to put it over here in a Word document or an email, and hopefully get it up on my screen for you because I can't share that screen for one reason or another. Um, Come 
come over here. If I can't do this, I will, um, I'll, I'll share it. I'll send you some stuff in email, but it would be much better if we could just do it right here. Okay. So, So what I'm going to do is put, I'm going to put this in a little email and then I'll display the email page, assuming that um, Zoom will let me do that. Okay, so let's see if I can share this screen. Okay, so can you see uh, a little piece of code in your on your on your screen right now? Okay, great. Thank you, Derek. So what this does, I just want to talk about the order of things. And I also want to talk, a student asked me specifically about what a semicolon means in MATLAB. And I would like to show you not only this what the semicolon means, but I would also like to uh, show you how to find specific answers like that. Okay, so on this code, um, we're going to input a temperature type. And once again, we have this, this double equal sign where it says if type double equal sign in single parentheses F semicolon, that's a comparison. So we use that for the string since F, C, R, or K is not a number that we're going to do an operation on. We are comparing our input to a value. So we're saying if it's equal to F down here in the else if statement, we're saying if it's equal to C. And then there's some statements below that. Okay. Now the thing I want you to show C here is if you put in F, then you calculate C, K, and R, and then you display C, K, and R. So that seems to be the most efficient or most workable way to get that kind of input um, or to take the input and do the calculation. So you check, you do that comparison, you do the calculations, and then you do the display right here. There are a couple of things I want to point out. Um, first of all, display is not capitalized. That command has to be lowercase d. And you also do not put a semicolon after the line display. So I was a little, I, I couldn't really I, I, I think I just found that out by trial and error. But if you put a semicolon at the end of the display command, it actually suppresses the display. So that was kind of an odd, um, an odd thing to me. But what I want to show you also is with this code, um, I, I ran it several different times, but CKR, um, if we do that, let me get some more code and put it up here so you can see it. All right, let's see here. I gotta come back up here. Uh huh. Okay. Input C. All right. So down in my window on my MATLAB display, um, what I did for this particular piece of code was I put in um, a value. I said I want my input to be C, and then um, I gave it a value. So the output became, okay, this is, hang on a second. This is just weird. All right, I'm just gonna put a little snippet here. So this is what my outlook looks like on my MATLAB um, the screen. So it tells me the name of the program uh, which is homework one asterisk Northrop attempt to input a value of C in, or input a temperature C. So that's the um, comparison. It does that comparison, then input the temperature 55. Then it prints out what that corresponds to based on those formulas of um, F, R, C, and K. So I've got F here, and then I've got R here. And K, and then C to, and so we've got four different values. Now, the other piece I would like you to, to look at 
is if you take a look in your workspace, if I can get this, um, all of the values of the variable will display when you do this, okay? So if you take a look, I'm gonna try one more time to share the screen. I really wish I could share the screen, so I'm gonna try. Let me see. Oh, now it just said it was going to. See, every time I pull it up on the screen, it pauses my screen share. I don't I, mean, I don't even know why it's doing that, but I can't show you my I can't show you my workspace here. Um, anyway, let's see what else can I do. Try one other thing here. Okay, so hmm. so anyway, okay, so I'm just going to have to describe this to you, but when you pull up MATLAB and you have on the left-hand side, uh, you would have the files that in the current folder. In the middle, you would have the code or the script, and below it in the command window, you would have the values. Off to the right in the workspace, it will tell you the variables. And here, if I could show it to you, I would be so happy. Um, it has C, K, R, and F, and it shows you which value, what the value is of each of those different, um, of those different variables. It tells you the type is K and the value is negative 44. So that in that case, that's where I put in a value of K of negative 44, which as I said, should return a value of or should return output of invalid. And this program in this iteration doesn't do that. It just goes through that structure and does the calculations. But the part that I wanted to show you, let me go ahead and share my little snippet here. Okay. Tell me what, do you see MATLAB or do you see email? I see email. Okay. That, yeah, I just, I don't know why. It just keeps pausing every time I want to show my MATLAB code. Um, anyway, the values of CKR, like I said, will show up. On the right-hand side, it will show that. But this code, the order in which it goes and the fact that the semicolon does not go after the formulas or the display um, may be something that is helpful to you. The only difference will be is you have an if and then I did use the else if command. I think it was Michaela asked me if the else command would be, um, if it would be else or else if. Since we have a stack of things that we're doing, um, use else if until the last command and in, that, in that else if statement. And then when you get to the bottom, um, you would have else, um, in other words, FCKR is the input. So one of the, if else if statements would be if the input is F, if the input is R, if it's C or if it's K. Then you would have one at the bottom that says else, um, else would just mean anything other than those inputs. Invalid, please enter F, R, C or K, okay? So that's the one piece of this code that is not, um, I don't have in the code at this point. And then the last thing would be, where are we going to check to see if the value is zero? I sort of feel like the best place to do that, if it goes below absolute zero, is at the very top, okay? So what I would do is create a little if else if structure, and right after you say input the temperature type, then I would put a little structure that says if type equals F, um, if value is less than negative 459, uh, then display invalid input end, okay? Or go, you know, drop through that structure. So I think if you go through the decision as to whether you're below absolute zero at the top, I think it will eliminate a lot of the problems. Um, because otherwise you're gonna have to put it every single time in that if loop, if, or it's not loop, but in the if then structure. So, does that make sense? Does anyone have any questions about that specifically? No. Nope. Okay. 
All right, so um, let's go back and take a look at our Moodle page. Okay. Great. All right, hang on. Let's get rid of you. All right, here we go. So I'm going to stop this share. And I'm going to take a look at the Moodle page again. All right. So if we take a look at what our schedule is like, um, today is just a work day for Computer Science 1010. And like I said, I have eight people who have submitted their MATLAB code so far. So if the rest of you will get that in over the weekend, I will uh, go through your code and I will give you feedback on, um, on that, on your code. So on Monday of next week, we have both our lecture period and our lab period. So during lab, uh, during both, we're just going to, I will hopefully, I will have comments back to you. Um, give you feedback on your code before class on Monday. So we'll be able to work from that and um, hopefully give you some more direction to follow. And then in lab on Monday, we will also go through that. And then the final code will be submitted on Wednesday, September 27th. So that means that in class on Wednesday, September 27th, we'll also have a little bit of time to put the finishing touches um, on your code. So at the end of Wednesday, will actually be done with this part of MATLAB. Um, just so that you know, the rest of the time that we have together, uh, we're going to spend one, we're gonna do one more MATLAB uh, coding issue because I really want you to see how nice it is to be able to do graphs and visual representations of data with MATLAB. So after we finish this piece of code, we're gonna just do one more piece of code um, in order to graph some stuff, to put in some inputs and graph some different different outputs. Then that will take us up through um, midterm, which is actually here um, on October 11th. And on uh, October 11th, we will have our midterm exam. The midterm exam is just going to be a small piece of code. It's not going to be anything like what we're doing right now. It will be a small piece of code similar to the whole Hello World program that you will write uh, in a time constraint environment. Uh, you'll be able to have access to MATLAB and all the other um, resources that you would need to write code, but you'll write a little, little piece of code um, and then we'll be done with MATLAB entirely and we will move on to Excel. All right, so at this point, does anyone have any other questions? Um, where are we supposed to submit our MATLAB code or like how are we supposed to submit the MATLAB code again? Yes, you have two choices. You can either uh, submit it as a .m file, so a MATLAB file, the code itself, or uh, you can put it into put the code into a Word document. Because if you put it into a Word document, in either case, submit it through Moodle. But if you put it in a Word document, I can copy it and create a file uh, for you, um, and then run it through my own MATLAB environment. Um, make sure that you name the code put your name in it somewhere in a comment, put it in the name of the program as well, just because uh, that way I can make sure that I give you credit for your work. Okay, any other questions? How about you? You're good, Hiroki? Okay, good deal. All right. So, well, thank you all for coming out on a rainy Friday morning. I appreciate it. So, um, I'm going to stop recording and then class is over for today. I will post this um, and I'll also work on why I can't, uh, why I can't put my MATLAB stuff up on the screen. So, I'll try to get that figured out as well. So, all right, you guys have a wonderful day. And uh, oh, there's one other thing I want to say just really briefly. Like I said, when you're doing your code, make sure that you keep checking the workspace as well as the command window and the code window. But look at the workspace to see what variables are 
what variables MATLAB is working with, then right above the workspace, there is a search, uh, a search window that says search documentation. Uh, you can use that very, um, it's very explicit, explicit. Like for example, if I type in the word uh, semicolon, the two words semicolon into that workspace, I get a documentation center and it gives me several ideas about what that looks like. Okay, so um, you'll have a lot of topics. They're really short, really to the point. Um, and it says, for example, let's see, I'm gonna try, um, hope springs eternal. I'm gonna see if I can possibly share this screen. Do you see a do you see a screen that says search semicolon with some different topics in it? Yes. Excellent. That makes me so happy. Okay. So for example, uh, if you touch on this display, it will tell you some stuff about the result of the expression. And it says the MATLAB function is called by MATLAB when a statement or expression is not terminated by a semicolon, and it shows you the syntax. So in other words, as you can see, the display of a variable does not have a semicolon after it. So that was just, and actually that was a, a really, it's a really, it's, it's, a, it's easy to make as a mistake because um, when we code in MATLAB, we're used to putting that semicolon at the end of a expression. But it turns out that if you put it at the end of the word display, that it terminate, it, it, it suppresses that display. So just something that is quite helpful. So the, the whole search function um, is very helpful. So I would suggest using it on a regular basis. All right. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and stop recording.